Uh, this is a spectroscope. It shows you the line spectra uh, that we're going to be looking at for hydrogen in a second. Who put a shower in a chemistry room? So here I am in a dark room getting increasingly frantic trying to video the line spectra of hydrogen through the spectrometer. Now hydrogen also gives out UV so I'm kind of worried that I'm zapping my DNA here as well. Finally I managed to get it and it looks a little bit like that. Two of the lines are very clear, the third is less clear and the final two lines are not really visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it out uh, using the active board. All right then, so you can see it on the right hand side, the line spectra there. There's the hydrogen atom. Now it's actually got some extra rings. Those rings, those shells, energy levels, that's the words we're gonna use. These energy levels are empty at the moment. And the electron is orbiting around the nucleus there. So the line spectra of hydrogen is shown on the right. Uh, line spectra shows selected frequencies as opposed to a continuous spectra which shows all frequencies. And here's the clever thing. You can line up the line spectra with where those energy levels are on the atoms. It works best with hydrogen. That's just amazing. Just think about that for a second. The lines that you saw on that poorly shot video line up to the energy levels in that hydrogen atom. That's, that's pretty amazing, if you ask me. So let's look at the detail of how uh, this line spectra comes about. So first of all, uh, if you have to add energy to the hydrogen, uh, you can heat it up, you can use electricity, and even certain types of light will add energy to the hydrogen. So the electron may jump from an inner shell to an outer shell. And this is also very freaky. The electron can only exist on those shells. It cannot exist between those shells. So how on earth did it jump from one shell to another? Well, it's because the electron's behaving like a wave, that's quantum mechanics. You don't need to know that, but that's just amazing. Once the electron's gone to an outer shell, that's called being excited. The electron has been excited. And then at some time in the future, it will jump back down towards the nucleus and it will release a photon of light. And it's that light that's coming out that's making the line spectra. So again, we need to look in a little more detail. Now the electron can be excited uh, from any inner level to any outer level. It doesn't have to just jump up one energy level. It can jump up more than one, like it just did there. It jumped up two energy levels. And conversely, the electron can, can jump down just one level, or it can jump down all the way back to the level closest to the nucleus. Big jump is big energy. Stick that in your head. If the electron has jumped out or been excited a long distance, then it must have used a lot of energy to do that. And if the electron goes a long way back towards the nucleus, it's going to release a high energy photon. So big jumps mean big energy. Now these energy levels are labeled uh, n. n equals 1, n, n equals 2, on upwards uh, to infinity. I'm just going to stop at 5 so we don't have to wait for the heat death of the universe. The two words used to describe these energy levels are concentric, they're within one another, like a, an artery target, and they're converging. So the further you get from the nucleus, the energy levels get closer together. So you need to learn those words, concentric and converging. Let's look at the n equals 1 level. So as the electron gets excited out, just like that, and then jumps back in again, it releases a photon as it jumps back towards the nuclei. And you can see that those are always going to be big jumps. Any jump to the n equals 1 is going to be big. Now what's the high energy photon that's going to come off? Not ultraviolet, ultraviolet. So that's the high energy photon that's going to be released whenever the electron jumps back to the n equals 1. Let's look from n equals 2. If something jumps back to the n equals 2 level, that's never going to be quite as big a jump as back to the n equals 1 level. So what has got less energy than ultraviolet. I can't believe I spelt that wrong. That is actually a word. It means to buy with a Visa card. I looked it up. So it's visible light. Any electron that jumps to the n equals 2, it's going to be a smaller jump, visible light. 
And any electron that jumps back to the n equals 3, well, that's a much smaller jump than the previous two. So that's going to be a smaller jump, smaller energy. And what's lower energy than visible, that's going to be infrared. And that's as much as the IB wants you to know. Jumps to the n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3 level. After big jump equals big energy, the next phrase you need to get in your head to understand line spectra is converge at high energy. More often than not, that's the answer to the most common question. Where do the lines converge in a line spectra? They converge at high energy. So let me try and explain that. We're going to use the n equals 2, uh, is where our electron's going to jump back down to. That was the, the video that I shot quite poorly at the beginning. The visible light. All right then. So high energy is going to be on the right, and I'm going to put low energy on the left. So the low energy is going to be red, it's low energy visible light, because it's n equals 2. And the higher energy is going to be violet. Okay, if the electron moves from n equals 3 to n equals 2, it's going to release red light. If it moves from n equals 4 to n equals 2, that's a bigger jump. And so it's going to release higher energy visible light. And in fact, that accounts for that light blue line. And when it jumps from n equals 5 down to n equals 2, that's a bigger jump, so it's going to be a bigger energy photon, in this case, uh, dark blue, I suppose. I'm going to have to add some more rings now, so I'm going to stick the n equals 6 in. So at n equals 6 to n equals 2 jump, that's even bigger, a higher energy. But notice how, since the rings are converging, those lines on the line spectra are also converging. And the others follow the same sort of pattern. So that's why the lines converge at high energy, because the rings converge as they move away from the nucleus. That's really clever, right? Eh? And since there are supposedly infinitely energy levels, if you excite the electron so much it hits the n equals infinity, well, you've just made an iron. You've ripped that electron off. Now, since each element has its own unique line spectra, as long as you can see the light, you can identify which elements are present. And using that theory, when they trained a spectrometer on the sun, or when Dr. Atkinson trained it on the sun, they saw uh, some colors and some line spectras that weren't present anywhere in any known elements. And that's how they discovered helium. Not on the Earth, but on the sun, first of all. This is a live footage from Curiosity landing on Mars. The real NASA footage, the stuff they don't want you to see. Now that has a laser which, when it shoots out, hits a rock, excites the atoms in the rock, and then there's a spectrometer on board that will analyze the line spectra and can be used to identify which atoms are in the rock. Oh, we're losing contact. 